Western New York. Now, Carol Jason, Don Postles, Sports with Dennis Williams, and Weather with Don Paul. Live from Channel 4, this is News 4 at 6. Trapped by a toppled truck on the thruway. Good evening, everyone. Carol is off tonight. This story is breaking right now in the New York State Thruway, where a truck rolled on top of a car near the Williamsville toll barriers. News 4's Jody Hovleton is live at the scene. Jody? Well, Don, we are near the South Forest overpass in the 90 eastbound, where three people have been taken to the hospital after a tractor trailer overturned on top of a car. The accident happened just before 5 o'clock tonight. Crews here on the scene believe the driver of the tractor trailer somehow lost control of his truck that was carrying 42,000 pounds of welding components. The truck then rolled over on top of a car with a mother and her 8-year-old son inside. Crews had to cut the door from the car to get the mother out. She, along with her 8-year-old son and the driver of the tractor trailer, were all taken to area hospitals, but authorities do not believe the injuries are life-threatening. Witnesses say the accident was unbelievable. I was coming up over the bridge, and I heard a loud noise, and I looked down, and I seen the truck start coming and just crushed this car. It just went sliding. It was coming right over. I never seen anything like that in my life. As somebody said, the firefighters were all smiling when you arrived, and the main reason we were all smiling is because everybody was alert and talking to us, and we weren't pulling victims out. We were pulling patients out that we could treat and get to the hospital. We were very happy about that. Now, authorities here on the scene say this is really a trouble spot for tractor-trailer drivers. They say that they do not realize the scope of the turn when, the ex when they exit the 290 onto the 90 eastbound. So this really is a warning not only to tractor-trailer drivers, but to automobile drivers when they are following tractor-trailers tra tra along this stretch of the road. You can see that the 90 is flowing. Traffic is flowing in the right lane of the 90 eastbound right now. But you may want to avoid this scene as you drive home tonight. Don? All right, Jody. Mike. When you see the pictures in this next story, you'll understand just how lucky a mother and her eight-year-old son are. A tractor trailer rolled over on their car today, and they survived to tell about it. Eyewitness News reporter Andrew Siff was on the scene and has details. It looks bad enough from a distance, with flashing lights everywhere. But look closer, and even emergency crews were amazed. Denise Zittlemoyer and her son Bradley were inside this station wagon and survived. The crash startled neighbors like Hank Osika, who has lived near the Williamsville toll barrier for 24 years. I just heard the noise, I turned around and I saw the truck starting to go. State police say the tractor trailer lost control on the curve after the 290 exit onto the I-90 eastbound. And as he approached the end of the ramp, his load shifted, causing the tractor trailer to roll over on the top of the car. The good Lord was watching out for that family today because it could have crushed that car like a pancake. I can't figure out why it didn't crush anymore. Snyder firefighters say eight-year-old Bradley crawled to safety, but his mom needed help. We brought in our hydraulic jaws and cut the door open and pulled her right out. Took only a matter of a few minutes. One of the things which may have saved two people's lives, the tractor trailer was traveling with a partially full load. If this welding material had been stacked higher, both people could have been killed. Denise Zittlemoyer was brought to ECMC, where she is in fair condition with non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities say her son will also be okay. Tractor-trailer driver Wayne Dotson is also in fair condition at ECMC. He is facing charges of failure to slow down, failing to secure his cargo, and keeping an improper logbook. In Amherst, Andrew Siff, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. We hear time and again that speed kills. Another reminder... Luscious lemon. Creamy cheesecake, so deliciously decadent, you'd better find a good hiding place. May we suggest your mouth? Dessert Delights, new from Jell-O. How can I get my creamy cottage cheese to taste fresh every time I open it? Sam Breakstone, get out of the tub! That's it! Breakstone's cottage cheese is out of the tub and available in snack size four packs for a fresh taste every time. Some home improvement stores have been telling you that they have lower prices than the Home Depot. Somebody's been very bad. You can sit around and wait for some home improvement store to offer lower prices than the Home Depot, but it's not gonna happen. The Drew Crew. Bite me, dough boy. I'm Mimi. Bing, bang. You had a problem with that? I'm a very freaky girl. The kind 
you don't take home to mother. I get up at dawn to look this good. I think of makeup as my palette and my face as my canvas. Hey, I'm a people person. I expect you to treat me with a little bit of respect. How little? The Drew Carey Show. Drew it five days a week. Tomorrow night at 7 on WB49. Peer pressure, pressure can, can be a, be a real, real problem. problem. Peer, Peer pressure. pressure. Everybody wants to fit in. Seem cool. But how cool are you? When your friends decide. Follow me, dude. Do this. What you think they can do. Let's jump off a roof. Who are you talking to? If you really want to fit if in. you really want to fit in. Only let people on, on TV. TV. People on TV. People on TV. Only let people on TV tell, tell you what, what to, to do. do. Yeah. Trust us. Trust us. Do you feel the trust? It's a bond. We know what's best. We know what's best. Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Coming this fall on WB49. <laughs> The priest says, oh my gosh, I thought it was an altar boy. <laughs> uh, uh, did I mention that he had a pet collie? No, you didn't. Oh, yeah. It's much funnier if you know that. Maybe. Good morning. I bring you samples of what the well-dressed stamp is wearing this year. Mulcahy, from Marvin's House of Mirth. Ah, this must be my Joe Miller joke book. Too late. Oh, you watch it, Colonel. This book is loaded with snappy comebacks. Colonel, here's one for you. What about that other one? What other one? Saw so one in there with Mildred's handwriting on it. She always uses that old fountain pen that makes everything look like it was written by a monk. There it is. This is for Captain Pierce. Pierce? It's got a Hannibal postmark. It's even the stationery Mildred bought at the Sisters of Mercy tag sale last summer. Let me see that. Sorry, sir. Not unless you got some ID that says you're Captain Pierce. Uh, Colonel, a couple guys here want to meet you. Colonel, Lieutenant Pavlovich of Rear Echelon Security. This is Sergeant Lally. What brings you boys to our duchy? Well, sir, we've had reports of infiltrators in this sector, so we'll be patrolling the Quantu Pass for several days. You never have too many cops on the beach. Why don't you stop by my office? We'll go over your map. A couple of roads up there that could send a young jeep to a retirement home. <laughs> well, I'd appreciate it, sir. You look pretty young yourself. How long have you had that bar? Two months, sir. Holy Joe, what are you doing this close to the front? Don't they usually start you boys off in the Kid Gloves Battalion? Well, they offered me a desk job in Paris, sir, but I asked to go someplace where I'd get my hands dirty. Good for you. Oh, uh, Sergeant, uh, what do you think the men would say to a nice hot meal? Great idea, sir. Might be the last one we get for a while. Follow me, Lieutenant. That guy turned down a job in Paris? I'd give my left bank to go there. He's no spoiled kid. Mm -hmm. Most of these hot shots come up barking orders. Not this kid. He takes good care of us. We take good care of him. Oh, how about that? She scrimped and saved and paid off the mortgage on their home six months early. <laughs> I've been setting aside my egg money each month. One day, I checked the bank book, and lo and behold, I had enough to buy the whole hen house. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely Mrs. Potter. I'm, I'm enclosing the mortgage and would like you and everyone who's close to Sherman to give him a surprise mortgage burning party. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I can't be there to celebrate with you, but tell Sherman that while you're burning the mortgage, I'll burn the free calendar the bank sent us. <laughs> <laughs> so when's the fire? Well, well, listen, you know, it's going to take a while. I think we got to find a caterer and uh, make the place cards. Pierce. Did you get a letter from my missus? Well, uh, I don't know. I got a letter from, uh, Mildred Potter. There's only one in Hannibal who writes like a monk. Now, look, if something's wrong, I want to know about it. Oh, no, no, there's nothing wrong at all. As a matter of fact, you're going to like it. Oh, really? Now, there's two total strangers sharing secrets with my wife. And I'm supposed to be tickled pink? All right, I'll tell you what she said. She said, don't tell Sherman. And she outranks us by marriage. OK, OK. I can see I'm not going to get anywhere here without truth serum. If you fellas don't want to tell me, there's nothing I can do. So I'll be shoving off. We better have this party today before it kills him. Let's give the party in the Colonel's tent, and the theme will be home away from home. That's not bad. For decoration, we can make a little white picket fence. Of course, it won't be complete without a pink flamingo on the lawn. Congratulations. BJ and Charles are the fix-up committee. Well, uh, can't we just hire a decorator? Then we're going to have to keep Colonel Potter out of his tent until they're through. I'll handle that. No offense, Major, but that's going to require sneakiness and dishonesty, so I'll be your technical advisor. Fine. You two are the distractions committee. Now, wait a minute. If we're going to be decorating the Colonel's tent and they're going to be keeping him away from it, we're going to need a go-between. I'm good at that. It's sort of what I do for a living. Okay, we've all got our assignments. We'll reconvene at 1,800 hours. Remember, <clears throat> the fate of the free world rests in your hands. Oh, who cares? 
We will now leave one by one according to order of departure. Answer me this. Does it have anything to do with where I'm going to be living out my retirement years? Yeah. No.